Hey you, retro game collector. I bet you wish all your games were in boxes, but worried you can't afford it. Well, I've got a solution for you. Why don't you make your own boxes? Watch this and I'll show you how. Hello, it's James. And it's Colin. Uh, here from Let's Talk Retro, and today we're going to show you how to make your own video game boxes. I'm quite interested in this because I've never actually done this. Uh, you're the expert at this sort of thing. Uh, I've made quite a few because um, I'm such a cheapskate and uh, tend to buy car only. Yeah, I have this little saying, no box, no buy -y. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to show you um, the tools that you need, and uh, this uh, image here shows some scissors, which is obvious, a uh, metal ruler would be good, uh, a sharp knife, like an X-Acto knife, they're available on eBay, and some double-sided tape. So I see you're using a Wilco ruler. Yeah, other brands are available. Yeah. And I think it's quite important that it's a metal ruler, am I right saying that? Yeah, safety first, kids. Yeah, it's much safer using a metal ruler um, in case the knife slips. Uh, you don't want to stick the knife in your finger because it is sharp. The last thing you need is a cutting mat just to protect your desk. So I suppose the first thing to do is to get your box artwork. So where do you get your artwork from? Where's a good place for that? There's a brilliant website and you couldn't do this project without them. It's nintandbox.net. Let me uh, show you the site and um, what we've got to do to find the uh, boxes we need. So I'm just scrolling around just to show you. They put the latest editions on the uh, on the main screen, uh, so you can flick through and see what people have completed recently. And um, the important thing about this website is it's all free. Um, the uh, if you find the boxes useful, please just go on the sec uh, the section there and donate. Uh, you can donate just as little as two euros, and it just helps the uh, keep the site running, and uh, pay for things like the hosting and things like that, and the bandwidth because uh, all that kind of stuff isn't cheap. Um, so they've got a menu at the top that lets you select different consoles. There's NES. Um, all sorts of stuff on there, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, uh, N64 and Super Nintendo so you just select what you want at the top and there's various options and this is a new feature on the site that lets you choose what type of artwork you're looking for so you can choose the language, whether you're just looking for labels um, instruction books are on here as well uh, and different versions of boxes so you might get the Japanese box the um, the European box and then the American so you can choose between each one um, they're still of course looking for artworks so if, if you guys have got any artwork at home there is a section on the website that you can scan your boxes in and uh, upload the uh, missing boxes to them it's very easy to do here I've just found the box that we're going to make today and it's Super Mario Duck Hunt um, so you can see there's various uh, different artwork that you can download on here. There's the cartridge labels if you need that, if your label is looking a bit tatty. And of course, it's only Nintendo stuff on this site, isn't it? Obviously. Yeah, they are uh, heavily based around uh, Nintendo. So unfortunately, no Sega yet. But if you want to create a Sega website, um, we'll support you. Yeah, it'd be a good idea. So you get, once you choose the artwork that you want, you can see there's, com sometimes you get comments, you can rate here what you think of it. Um, it also describes, you know, the usernames of the people who have, have worked on it. Um, there's the option of downloading in A3 or A4. So that's obviously paper sizes for those guys in Europe. Um, we're going to do an A3 uh, download so you just select what you want a4 a3 and it downloads the image uh, as a as a raw just open that up and you'll be able to see the uh, the artwork and a3 is the best size to use is it 
Yeah, if you use A4, you have to join two pieces together. So A4, really, if you're printing at home, and, and you, you, but we're going to use a, a print shop because you just get a better, um, I think you get a better um, box if you uh, get it professionally printed. Obviously, not everyone can do that. Um, you can just print them at home on A4 and uh, tape the two boxes together. There's me just uh, showing you the quality of the artwork, which is great. Right, here's our artwork, Colin, um, back from the print shop. It's been printed onto SR A3, so it's a bit bigger than A3. And the car is card. Um, it's 350 GSM, uh, obviously the weight. And um, you need the minimum of 300 um, to get a good box. So if you're printing the artwork out at home or if you're getting a print shop to do it, the important thing to do is to make sure that you get it printed to actual size. Here I'm just cut out some double-sided tape. And you would have noticed I was just pointing out where it needs to be stuck. The design of the template um, has a little flap that you... Uh, need to, to, to stick together to make the box complete. So yes. you just cut out some tape and stick it down. And it's better to do that before you actually make the box up rather than doing it after, is it? Definitely. It's far easier to, to do the, the double-sided tape before you do anything else. And so then it's on the cut now, like, like you're doing now, I suppose. Yep, you've got to get some good scissors. Um, feel free to cut it out anyway. You don't have to follow the way I do it. Um, just with cutting out anything you just got to make sure you keep within the lines and it's much better to use scissors than a knife yeah don't don't do this with a knife um scissors all the way i would say you don't want to see so if you cut this wrong you've either got to reprint it or you know get another get another copy done at the at the print shop so um just take your time there's no rush and um cut out all around the box Right, we're just going to speed up the video, I think, just so uh, you don't have to sit and watch this um, box get cut out. So on to step three and fold in your box. Yep, this is important because um, you're using a knife, so safety first. Um, I'm just showing you now the places where you need to uh, draw your scoring mark. So this is the folds of where the box is going to fold once it's complete. So I'm just pointing those out now. It'll be quite obvious when you... Uh, have some artwork in your hand ready to do, but those are all the areas that need to be uh, to scored. So you need your ruler and your sharp knife. Um, you don't want to use too much pressure because you don't want to cut right through the uh, the printed sheet. I was you, just going to say that. I think I'd be, be scared of cutting all the way through. No. Have, you, have you ever done it? Uh, no, no, just because I'm just careful because I, I know the, the pain the time it takes to cut a box out you you tend to be careful on this bit because you don't have to do it again so just score your lines just the light pressure then yeah yeah a bit of light pressure and I suppose lining the ruler up pretty pretty good is also also uh needs to be done here because if you don't line it up properly then you're going to score the wrong place which is going to mess up your box as well. Absolutely. Yeah. 
So we've done the cutting and the scoring. Now it's the final bit, the folding. Yeah, this will be the most exciting bit for me, seeing it all come together, I think. So what are you cutting there? Just doing a little line. Um, so with, with boxes, with any cardboard box, um, especially game boxes, you'll notice there's a little cut um, on the top flap, and that's to keep the flap um, keep the flap down when the box is together. So I'd um, forgotten um, to do uh, the scoring for the flap, so I just made two little marks where the fold's going to be, and just doing a, a last score. Um, that's the top flap of the box. So how long do you think it takes to make a box from start to finish? Then it's... It takes me about about 10 minutes. Yeah, because obviously we speeded things up a little bit on here. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, it depends how, how good you are. It depends how much Blue Peter you watched yeah. when you were younger. Yeah, well, I think this episode is going to come in at about sort of 15 minutes, so your, your 10 minutes is probably about right. This is just the way I do it and, and the sequence I do it, but you can do it any way that suits you. Um, you can see now when you uh, go to fold it if your if your score if your lines line up or not. You can see it's really starting to take shape and starting to look like an NES box now. The last bit is. Um, keep it all together so remember earlier we did some double-sided tape I'm just tidying that up now so it fits the more tape the better um, to keep the box together and it's only actually needed in that one place because the rest all just folds in does it yeah everything else um, the bottom the design of this box um, and the the Game Boy boxes they um, super um, and the um, N sixty four boxes for for Japan all uh, locked together like this at the bottom. So when you do this bit, um, just be careful to make sure you line up. Um, I find it easier to slightly fold in one of the flaps because that gives you an idea of um, where you're starting and where you're finishing. And obviously, look at the artwork as well because there might be some. Uh, lines or something on the artwork that will help you line it up. Once you're happy that you've got it lightly pressed on each end and you're happy it lines up because you don't you don't want to do this bit wrong. Once you're happy you can just put a bit of pressure and um, if you've got some good tape on there that will stay. This is how you do the bottom bits fold the uh, end sections in first and they sort of lock under the front flap and a bit of pressure and the bottom will just sort of fit in place just like that and the top just folds in normally I suppose yeah that's it we're done. Um, to complement this, you can um, put it in a box protector. They're available on eBay and online, and that'll protect the box just like it would if it was an original box. Right, all finished. Here I am putting the game uh, back where it belongs, on the shelf, in a box. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it inspired you to go away and make your own boxes. Um, for now, what have they got to do, Colin? Till next time, keep it retro! So thanks once again for watching, I hope you enjoyed that episode of Let's Talk Retro, um, I certainly did and it's inspired me to maybe buy a few just cartridge games and make some boxes to uh, put them in. 
Uh, like I said in the episode, I've got a little saying, no no box, no buy So I won't buy a game unless it's actually boxed. Um, but yeah, so it's inspired me to have a go, so I hope it has you too. If you enjoyed the, the video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And there's another video on the screen which we made ourselves, you know, and uh, we think you might enjoy that one. It's our episode where we had a look at some of today's games that have been made on the retro consoles. So uh, if you haven't watched that episode, please click on that and watch that. But until next time, keep it retro, and we'll see you soon.